cord. Lord. <laughs> All right. Hey, welcome everyone. We're so glad that you're part of our health and wellness in the National Park session. Um, we are really excited to share with you the things we've been learning um, just about the way that outdoor experiences can um, contribute to our health and wellness. Um, I know health and wellness is on the top of everyone's mind and um, we're really looking forward to, to this time with you. So um, to start off, we want to introduce the group of six of us um, who've been working on this presentation um, for a while now. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Steph Santa Rosa. I work in the Honors College at Westminster College in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, not to be confused with other Westminster colleges in other places. Um, being in Utah, I get um, good access to the mighty five Utah National Parks. Um, and when I discovered that Partners in the Parks um, was a committee of, of NCHC, I couldn't believe it was really a thing. So um, when my um, supervisor said join a committee, I said this is the one for me. And so I've been happy to be part of the um, Partners in the Parks committee and attending the director's retreat at Smoky Mountain um, National Park a few years ago. And I'm currently working with um, my colleague Angela um, to plan a trip for next summer to Sitka, Alaska. So, <laughs> Belinda, you're you're up. <clears throat> Thanks, Stephanie. My name is Belinda DePriest, and I am currently a student at Georgia State University. I'm majoring in English and anthropology. My advisor for this um, project was Dr. Anthony Serpico. I'm certainly happy to be here. I am like Stephanie that I couldn't believe that this was a thing. And when I joined NCHC last year and attended the conference virtually, I had the wonderful experience of getting to know uh, Professor McIntyre, who has turned me on to so many different things, including this group of rapscallions and I couldn't be happier to be in this place right now. Thank you. All right, I'm Angela Mick. I'm a counseling faculty member at Hillsborough Community College in Tampa, Florida. Um, my relationship with Partners in the Park started with Kathleen King. Some of you guys know her as a well-loved Partners in the Park individual and partnership. Um, but I have participated in the Everglades trip with her um, for two times. And as you know, Steph and I are planning for Sitka, Alaska. And I'll turn it over to our wonderful park staff who's with us. Thank you, Angela. So happy to be here. Hi, everyone. I'm Diana Allen, Chief of Healthy Parks, Healthy People for the National Park Service. So Healthy Parks, Healthy People promotes our parks as a health resource. So we're really pleased in these uh, so uncertain times to be able to offer a place where people can find health and healing. So Healthy Parks, Healthy People looks at how we can promote connecting with nature and each other, love for um, the planet and love for nature as places that we can promote our physical health, our spiritual health, our mental health and social well-being. So really pleased to have two of our student interns uh, within the Office of Public Health. We'll turn it to you, Olivia. Um, my name is Olivia Arias. Um, great to meet you all. Uh, I just graduated uh, from college from Washington University in St. Louis in May with a degree in environmental policy. And shortly after, um, I started working as Diana's intern. So I'm based in St. Louis remotely. And um, yeah, it's been a pretty incredible experience to get to find all, find out about Healthy Parks, Healthy People and how that helps people, the earth, and our parks. Hey everyone, I'm Michael Maharo. I am an intern at the Office of Public Health within the National Park Service. I primarily focus on health promotion. Uh, I am based out of Los Angeles, California. I'm also currently pursuing a Master's of Health Administration at the University of Lorraine. Thank you. 
Well, it's been an absolute joy for us to work with these um, park staff in putting this together. And um, as we were planning this, these are the outcomes that um, kind of guided our planning and our thought process. So this is what we're hoping will happen today. We're hoping that by the end of this session, you'll not only be able to um, describe for yourself the wellness benefits of getting outdoors, but you'll be able to share that um, with other people. We hope that even in our session today, um, you'll be able to participate in a virtual outdoor experience and that that will be a beneficial um, and good and healthy thing for you. Um, we hope that um, you'll be able to take away um, a new self-care tool, right? We need all the self-care tools we can get these days. And so we're hoping that you'll be able to realize how outdoor experiences can be part of that, um, your toolkit um, for taking care of yourself and living the most healthy and well life that you can. And finally, we want to give you some um, tips and tools and ideas um, for planning your own visits to national parks. Um, so to start us off with that, um, I'm going to hand it over to Angela, and she is going to take it from here. All right. So being a counselor, of course, you talk about feelings, right? You didn't know you were coming here having to talk about feelings. And originally, you were going to have the luxury, as a plane goes right behind me really loud, um, you were going to have the luxury of being anonymous and doing a poll anonymous. But guess what? This is about change and you get to try and share about things and be open. So really briefly, one of the things I wanna ask is first, thinking back to March, 2020. So March, 2020, I remember Friday the 13th, what happened, but March, 2020 to the present of now, how would you describe this last year and a half for you? Rebecca says that was a galaxy far, far away. So it feels like a really long time ago, right? So for some people, it feels like it was like forever ago. Some ups and downs, ups, downs, all around, right? Anything else? You can, you can unmute yourself. I'm overall, I'm good overall. Belinda, thanks. Right? Some people, when I spoke to them, roller coaster, absolutely. Um, some people, when I talk to them, um, they're like, oh my gosh, it's been so wonderful. I get to stay at home. I get to make my breakfast every morning. I don't have to drive. And I'm sitting there going, my hair is falling out. Like what's going on? So it impacted us all very, very differently. And when we think about 2020, some crazy um, things happen. Obviously there was the COVID-19 pandemic that impact the entire globe. No matter where you were at, you were impacted. If in the US, there was the presidential relate, the presidential race with the race with the tensions between different political parties, possible impeachment, going through all the trials. People were very, very passionate about what was going on during that time. Then there was um, the killing of George George Floyd. There was the Black Lives Matter movement and the protests. Some of the protests were peaceful. Some of the demonstrations were not as peaceful. There was police brutality. There was a lot that happened when we think of like 2020 till now, we've been, we've gone through a lot, I think, together. Um, and I think we could each probably tell our own stories about different things that happened during that time that impacted us more or less than others. So then I want you to think, so that's the past. If we move into the present, so mindfulness in the here and now, if you were to say, how at this very moment are you feeling? So it's Thursday, three o'clock. I'm not sure how your week's gone, right? Some of us have been through a lot, but if you were to say, put a, a feeling, tired, very much, tired, tired, a lot going on busy, ditto Christina, <laughs> a little stress. I'm at peace with how hard we all worked on this product project. I like it, Belinda. Anxious. Absolutely. So we're human, right? The things that are going on right now, you are impacted by what happened 
throughout the whole week until this moment, right? I'd love to say we just wake up and we're a brand new person, refreshed every morning, nothing else is impacting us. But some of us might not have slept well last night. Some of us might be struggling. Some of us might be having a lot of personal stuff that could be stressing us out. Um, and all those kind of things impact us. And the purpose of this presentation is really to talk about wellness in the wilderness. And we want to present to you some ideas about how can you get well in the wilderness? And so when I think of wellness, there are certain things that come to mind about what I do to, to maintain wellness. Um, Christopher, BPG with your wellness. Um, but what are some of your, what are some of the things you do to maintain your health, your wellness? When you think of wellness, what are some of the things you do? I go running. Running, that's a good one. Perfect. Perfect. So exercise, right? There's those people that get that energy going and they have that release through running, walk a dog. Absolutely. Christina, I have to go outside. Absolutely. Um, hug. Oh, that's sweet. Sports, read. I need to connect with others. Yes. Um, one of the things I had on our poll was spend, spend time with people I like, family and friends that I like, right? We don't always like everybody. So I think that there's those, there's those things with people. Sometimes we get our energy from ourselves. I love to work in the garden, being outside, running, massages. Yes, that would be nice right now. Cry, absolutely, an emotional release. So hopefully, our hope is that through this presentation that we're going to teach you a way to hopefully find some peace, some wellness in nature. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Olivia. Thank you for sharing. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, my name is Olivia Arias. Like I said before, um, I recently graduated from college with a degree in environmental policy from Washington University in St. Louis. Um, it was a lovely four years, but I'm out in the working world and ready to get moving. Um, so Healthy Parks, Healthy People is this incredible organization. Um, and you all know that we're getting disconnected from nature, whether that's through technology, whether that's you don't have the accessibility to get into nature. Um, and despite tons of research that has been gathered over the years that show that humans and nature provides a lot of benefits, um, there's, it's really hard to get out there for a lot of people. Um, so I have this quote here that says, you know, spending at least 120 minutes a week in nature is associated with good health and well being. And that can be just 15 minutes a day. And it doesn't have to be going on a hike or a run. It can be sitting on your porch, talking to your grandma. It can be looking at a tree in your backyard or going on a walk with your dog. Anything that you want, just try and find nature and go in there. Um, and Healthy Parks, Healthy People really looks at parks as a gateway for good health for the people and the planet. So it's a really beneficial relationship all around. There are a lot of benefits of being in a park, um, such as physical and mental. Um, physical benefits that you can find just simply being in nature, being close to green spaces, are as followed, reduced mortality, um, healthier eating habits, and that can mean being at a community garden and being connected with the earth and growing vegetables and that influencing the way of your lifestyle towards a positive direction. Um, it can be improving immune function and lowering cortisol and blood pressure, which is a huge issue in um, low income areas. There's a lot of obesity and being in nature really can provide uh, healthier improvements to your lifestyle. As far as mental health benefits, these are incredibly important, even just as important as physical benefits, but they're not as talked about. Um, you know, some people may even feel a little bit nervous being in nature or eerie, but I think that we really try and provide a space or talk with parks to make sure that their location is going to be a place where people can come and have their anxiety and depression and stress lowered. Um, it can make you extremely creative, have an awe effect. Um, I'm visiting California and I saw the beach for the first time two days ago and I, I was struck with awe and I still am. I'm every second I'm trying to go back because there's something incredible about seeing something 
that you've never seen before. And whether that's an ocean for me, that could be a tree for you, a large tree or a baby tree that makes you think about life and rec in creation. Um, so along with creativity and the awe effect, nature can also really inspire you to solve problems and work collaboratively with uh, your friends, family, and at your job. Um, so there's just incredible benefits all around that has lots of scientific research backed up. Moving forward, um, I'm going to bring in the other intern, Michael, and he's going to talk about how parks can actually act as a social equalizer, um, bringing together various communities and making you feel better in your life. Hey everyone. So accessibility, what does that really mean, right? Accessibility can be different, have a different definition to different people. So the Office of Public Health here at the National Park Service defines access as actions that make healthy park experiences easier, desirable, and relatable to all people. Um, so there's kind of three primarily perceptions of parks. So the first one is uh, the environmental impact in parks. So that means pack in, pack out what you carry into the parks, what you leave um, left behind in parks or what you bring from the parks home. A second perception is uh, behavior and activities that are occurring within the users of the parks. So this, be, this could be motorized vehicles, this could be hiking, biking, this could be when they're bringing their, their dogs, all this has an influence of how you perceive parks. Um, additionally, there is the efficiency of park management. So this could be rangers, um, you know, officers in uniform, um, who's kind of really managing the parks, what do the parks have to offer, who's taking care of that, and how that affects yourself. Additionally, there are barriers in the parks that the park is working to address. Some of these barriers are physical, financial, language, age, sex, uh, racially historical, or accessibility. So for example, there is the Women's Rights uh, National Historic Park in New York. There's also the example of Saving the Dunes in Michigan, where they have track chairs. These are wheelchairs that are accessible to all who may have uh, physical disabilities. They can ride them on the sand um, and enjoy them with their family and feel as if they're uh, wanted and needed within the parks. There's also the newly launched NPS app. So within this app, you can search parks, any park near you and see what they have to offer, um, see what the current projects they're working on. Uh, currently, we're also hosting roundtable discussions. These discussions uh, discuss the historical barriers, current barriers, and how we can move forward past these barriers within the national parks so that everyone can enjoy them all. Uh, so next will be Belinda. She will be uh, speaking about her experience within a park. Hello again, everyone. My name is Belinda DePriest, and I am a student at Georgia State University, and I'm participating in this presentation on Muskegee Creek and Cherokee lands. The video that you are about to see is one that I filmed at River Raisin Battlefield National Park. I made almost a dozen videos for this project. and I was happy to do every one, but this one, I had driven all night to get to this park and it, and it was on my heart to make sure that I made a land acknowledgement and that's all I could think about as I was driving in the middle of the night through Michigan. And when I arrived at the park, when I arrived at River Raisin, I, I walked around briefly and I read all of the placards. And instantly I understood why my spirit was so insistent that I recognize the Native Americans <clears throat> and the experience that they had at that time. So I wanna invite you 
to take a look at this video, but more importantly, to make sure that you look into River Raisin. I guarantee you that you will be encouraged when you understand the land and the actions that happen right at that specific place. And they're right there for you here in the United States as a part of the National Park Service. So thank you for being here today. And I'd like for you to enjoy this five minute walk of awareness and refocus. Sit back, relax, don't counterfeit yourself, make yourself comfortable, take a couple of deep breaths. Hi, it's Nancy. I'm Belinda Dupreece. If you want and to. And I am here at the walk. River Raisin National Battlefield Park. It is one of the National Park Services parks in the state of Michigan. Very significant to the War of 1812. I planned this trip to stop here knowing that I wanted to do a land acknowledgement at this park. And I have since learned that I am privileged I am proud and I am honored to be walking on land that were once inhabited by the Potawatomi nations, the Ashwanabe nations, and the Wyandotte nation. That consisted of the Ojibwe, the Chippewa, the Fox tribe that inhabited these areas primarily between this upper peninsula and Canada. As I walk onto the trail here, I am filled with gratitude to know that our National Park Service is constantly curating, caring for, and collecting information that celebrates our nation's history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And as I take my walk, stretch my legs, clear my head from driving all night, I'm reminded of how small my existence is and how large of an imprint that I can have on the world when I just take the time to make conscious decisions and listen to the sounds of nature to guide me. I'm enjoying this time where I'm taking notice of wildlife. I saw some beautiful bunnies hopping on the trail earlier. I've seen several cardinals and several other fowl and bird life that is specific to this area. And I'm humbled by the lives that were lost. and the tragic taking of these lands. But I'm also thankful for my independence, for my experience with all things that make this country great and all things that allow us to take part in our national 
Park Service. And I want to invite you to do the same. Get out of your head and into this. Pick a park and plan a trip. I'll see you out here. Thanks for coming with me today. This is one of the best assignments I've ever had. Thanks, Stephanie and Angela. See you guys back on, on land. Ciao. I, I was going to say back on dry land because that whole trip I had um, swam in almost every one of the Great Lakes. So I was preparing for a triathlon. And um, so my walk out into nature um, meant that, meant being back on land. And I know for me, um, getting outside helps me to reconnect and get grounded. So I'd like for you to put in your chat right now if going for that walk with me briefly, if it helped you in any way, if it has given you any motivation to go on and visit a national park and, and try to experience some of the wellness that you can receive when you're outdoors. Thank you. see somebody's feels relaxed that's great <laughs> well that's great very inspiring ready for a nap <laughs> Linda, I was wondering if the um, the vines that were climbing the trees were poison ivy. No, not that I could see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that wasn't ivy. I think now we're going to go back to Michael. No, we're going to go to Stephanie. All right, so hopefully, um, if you're like me and feeling a little chill right now, you might be thinking, how can I have more experiences like that? So we want to kind of move into a section of our presentation where we want to talk about um, how you can get yourself out into a national park. And um, obviously, us on the Partners in Parks Committee, we on the Partners in Parks Committee, we really think that um, a great way to do it would be to join one of the trips that we are planning. Um, for the coming year. So um, you want to stay in touch with NCHC, um, check out the website, find out what those projects are. Um, there's a variety of projects across the, the country um, that you can be part of um, as a student or even as a staff person or a faculty member in honor. So um, check those out and join us. Um, but maybe you want to plan a trip of your own. Um, so we're going to talk about how you'd go about doing that. So you need a plan, all right? And so the National Park Service, in addition to the many, many wonderful things they do, they even have a planning guide. And it's at this um, link right here. We're not going to go to it today. It's pretty extensive. Um, but we'll provide a resource guide before we end today where you can access that link and um, look at their um, extensive planning guide. We've kind of distilled it to kind of some of the more important pieces of planning planning your own national park trip. So the first thing that you need to do is to find a park. And um, again, our National Park Service has a lovely tool um, that can help you to do that. So wherever you are geographically in the United States, um, you can find a park, a national park site, probably somewhere close to you, okay? And so they have a um, very helpful link and we're gonna spend a few minutes there on the, the Find a Park link. And I think there's a version of this on their new app as well. So if you'd rather use your phone, you can find it on the app. Um, but this site is so helpful. And one of the ways that you can search for a park is um, you can search by state. 
So I happen to live in Utah. So if I click on my state here in Utah, I will find a listing of all the national park sites. And I say national park sites um, because it's not only our 60 some national parks, right? There are, you know, a national historic trail that you can visit. There are um, national monuments you can visit. There are um, recreation areas. There's historical sites. Um, so you can go to Capitol Reef and pick apricots. You can go to the Golden Spike and watch um, uh, the trains running, you know? You can learn about the his that part of our history. Um, you can see beautiful rock formations at Arches National Park. You can go kayaking and boating in Glen Canyon. Um, there are so many ways to get out there and so many things to do and beautiful places to see and things to learn. Um, and um, yeah, I would say that in many ways, National Parks got me through 2020. <laughs> so um, I was able to visit um, Grand Teton and Zion and Glacier um, with my family. We did some horseback riding at Zion. Um, yeah, my, my daughter happened to be in um, fourth grade and the National Park Service has a wonderful program every kid at a park so we had a free park pass because she was in fourth grade and then because of the pandemic they extended it into another year so um we are enjoying that right now so um so many places um to visit and this site can be so helpful in in finding the right one for you um another way that you can um search for a park is simply by maybe you have a particular park in mind. Um, so let's, for the sake of example, let's think about Yellowstone. Whoops, it helps to spell things correctly. Okay, so Yellowstone National Park, our first national park. So there's a site like this for every national park out there, um, a source of all kinds of wonderful information. You'll see at the top, um, of these sites, uh, COVID-19 response, so you can get the information about um, how to stay safe and how to um, responsibly um, enjoy that park along with other people. Um, there's a plan your visit um, section to each one of these sites. There's maps, there's calendars of ranger programs, so many different things. Um, but say we, we're looking at Yellowstone and we're saying, okay, basic information, let's, let's find some more basic information about um, Yellowstone. You'll see all the different um, kind of links they have here. Um, and I just want to point this out. So the next step, once you've found your park and you've decided where you want to go, the next thing that you want to do is set a date, okay? And um, you'll notice here in Yellowstone, they've got seasons, right? There's a, a separate link for if you're exploring in the summer, or if you're exploring in the winter. One of the beautiful things about going to a national park, it's not like McDonald's where you kind of know what to expect. It's going to be the same all the time. Oh no, a national park, right? Like it's different depending on the time of year you're there, who you're with, the kinds of activities you're doing. Um, you know, when I went to Glacier, only half of it was open. But hey, I really got to know that half and I'm gonna have a completely different experience when I go there again to explore the other half, right? So um, yeah, like you're setting your date, you're thinking about when I can make it. And I can tell you that no matter when you go to a national park, there will be things for you to do um, and experiences um, to have and memories to make. Um, so you found your park You've set your date, and the next thing that you want to do is think about what activities you might be interested in, in doing while you're there. So I'm going to turn it over to Belinda to talk a little bit about that. Okay, I'm just going to go quickly because we still have another slide to go, and it's 341, and we want to be able to open it up for uh, a Q&A uh, with um, our rock stars, as Angela says. So your activities, you, if you just pick um, a state, you can pick your um, Georgia, and then you, you can have a drop down of the specific activities for that region. Um, mine is going to come up uh, mostly the Chattahoochee and uh, Akamolji uh, mounds for hiking and fishing. 
And the Chattahoochee River is a part of the CNRA, the Chattahoochee National uh, Recreation Area. That's our biggest area in Georgia that is an NPS, but not all parts of the Chattahoochee are a part of NPS. Uh, many parts are privately owned. So there are only specific parts, but there are plenty of hiking trails mostly. And we also have a Buford um, hatchery, a trout hatchery that releases um, fish into uh, the the river every year to continue the life um, and, and longevity of that river. I was there one day um, doing a video, of course, and um, we were releasing trout into and the fishermen were entirely happy and so were the heron. <laughs> so moving on to the, we're looking at packing, pack and go, and, and Angela is going to handle that. So, so you're planning a trip, you're picking your date, you're figuring out what you want to do. You want to make sure you have the right gear. But one of the things that I think a lot of people think they have to go and spend a lot of money on gear. And the truth, it, it, it is not that way. Okay. Now, do I think that some gear is extremely important? Yes. Right. But that's where that research comes into play, making sure you have the right gear. But it does. you don't have to go and spend a lot of money to go out into nature. You can go out into nature and go for a peaceful walk. You can go out to nature and have a week-long camping trip. Um, but that's where that research comes into play. And, you know, having certain items with you, as a very young, naive faculty member, my partner in crime, Kathleen King, knew about the Everglades a lot more than me. And she gave me this thing on the way into the park. And I looked at it, doesn't look like, it looks like a mess, right? Thanks for the gift, Kathleen. I stuffed it in my bag and I'm like, I, I'm not going to need this. This is embarrassing. It's a head net. Like who would ever wear this, right? It's not cool. It doesn't look cute. It's a head net. Well, as the sun went down, we're on the water. As the sun went down, it's like, oh my gosh, you can hear the live train coming. And think about it. It was the mosquitoes. You think about the Everglades, you think, oh, I'm scared of the snakes. No, no, my friends, it's the mosquitoes. And so I was very grateful. I tell her this is probably my favorite gift, the best gift that I've gotten in the last probably 20 years for birthdays, Christmases, whatnot. My family doesn't always like that because I think it costs about $2 maybe, um, but it was one of the most important things. And so when you're planning that trip, figuring out what to take, make sure you bring the necessities. You don't need outfits for every day, but the head net, Everglades, you want to think about that. Michael? Mm, backpacking, backpacking on what Angela said, um, that icon there is filled with all sorts of suggestions on what you might take on a trip and specific to um, if you're going to look for mindfulness and meditation, um, you might want to take um, some things like some essential oils or incense and our um, ranger uh, Brett English um, from Raver Raisin also suggested a prayer drum, but you want to take things that are specific to whatever activities you are going for. Do not take flip-flops if you're going hiking. That is not going to help your wellness or your mental health. Right. And now I think we're, we're going to Michael, yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Linda. Um, so the, there it is, the uh, National Park Service has recently launched a Park Health Ambassador Program. This program is pretty much an amalgamation of what was previously right now. Um, there are six easy, simple steps to coalesce these ideas together. So let's dive into it. The first step is starting with you. Personally, this is the hardest step. I totally understand. It's hard to get off the couch. It's hard to get off from behind the screen. Um, but really, it's dedicating your mind and body to an experience, whether that experience be um, outdoors or even virtually, um, but deciding on on something you want to do. Um, and there's a lot of motivation factors. You know, Sometimes you see a cool picture on Instagram or any other social media outlet, or you get a new pair of running shoes and you want to use them for a while. Um, but definitely dedicating something that you like to do, uh, um, dedicating your mind and body toward it. 
The second step is tuning into nature, uh, which is really just building that relationship with nature, whether that be physically, mentally, or spiritually, um, taking care of yourself, uh, using the healing powers of nature. Um, this could be finding a park near you, using the MPS app, seeing what activities are going on. Uh, maybe you're a morning bird, you like going early, seeing what they have in the morning, or maybe you like going at nighttime and seeing uh, the beautiful skyline that's, that's above the park. Uh, just enjoying all aspects of nature. And then we move on to choosing um, an activity. These are simple, easy activities that are fun for you. Uh, personally, I like going hiking. You have to go at my own pace. Um, can stop, hear the birds, can stop, have a little picnic, um, hear the creek running in the background. So uh, these are simple activities. Common ones are running, biking, uh, finicking, uh, and fishing. Uh, some of these experiences might also be virtually. So you might have a virtual background or might explore a park virtually so that you plan for something in the future. Uh, it's also important for a next step to don't get stuck on goals. Right? I know that can be really stressful. You want to lose 10 pounds or um, you know, have a wedding coming up you want to look good for or you want to be a good role model for your children. Um, you get a new job, you have to relocate. So it's totally fine to move your goals, shift them, pivot them however way you feel comfortable. Um, what happens now may not work in the future. Um, shifting these goals will also bring new energy or a new experience. You know, life is about the journey, not the destination. So uh, don't get stuck on any goals. It's okay to move on. Uh, the fifth step is to share your experience. So share your experience with friends, family, coworkers, anyone you want. Uh, let them know about your journey, your experience, how that's going, um, and also invite them out. Maybe they have a different perspective or a different activity that you don't know of or haven't tried before. Um, so it might be meaningful to you, it might be purposeful or meaningful um, in another aspect to someone else that you might not know. Uh, some of these activities might be recreational that you enjoy, while others might like leisure activities. Um, but really, it's about the satisfaction of having this park experience. Um, so in total, just enhancing your own experience while supporting others. And the last step is to embrace and enjoy your journey, to become a park health ambassador, um, to look at the mind and physical benefits of your experience, as well as the experience of others who you shared with, um, to see where you can expand your experience and enjoy it in the future to come. So those are the six steps, thank you. And I will pass it over to Angela. Right. And so as a summary, um, we, we want, we encourage you students or faculty staff, if you've never participated in a partners in the park trip, I'd encourage you to do so. You do not have to be a professional, um, camper, packer, any of that. Um, you can be any skill level and go. I think some trips are probably more strenuous than others. Um, you can visit through videos if you can't leave the house, obviously, you know, through the pandemic, I think we've had to figure out what works rather than looking at what doesn't work and what we can't do. Um, I placed the resource guide in the chat. I'll do it again for you for a bunch of links for a lot of the information that we shared. But ultimately, I want to open the, the um, floor for questions with our the, the two students from the National Park Service interns as well as the chief from Healthy Parks, Healthy People, as well as my wonderful um, partners in crime, Steph and Belinda. Um, Belinda said she did about 12 videos. I think there were about 20. Um, and we've learned that she has a natural ability to really calm us because she would send us these videos and we're like, you're getting all relaxed on us and here I'm stressed out about it. So. We hope that you have some questions for people and we want to open the floor for questions for our park staff or for us. Feel free to open or unmute yourself too. Anybody? Actually, at this point, can we um, stop sharing screen so that we can all see each other? That might help the conversation. That helps. Yes. Great. Yes. I, I'd be interested in learning a little bit more about healthy parks, healthy people in regards to like when I go to a national park, is there programming around that theme or how does that, um, is it organized nationally?
Yeah, that's a great question. We've been uh, finding a lot of the activities in our parks uh, and working carefully now to help promote them more, to inculcate this culture of knowing the wellness and park experience connection. I think mostly it's been stealth health you know, you come to the park and you receive those benefits. We think as we move through and beyond COVID, it's more top of mind. We're, we're flocking to the parks. We're seeking that out. So I think we're at a unique place in time now where it's, it's, we're, we're realizing that uh, more prominently in popular culture and even within our staff. So I, I think there's an awakening happening um, organizationally and just um, culturally for all of us. Great. The first time I heard of, of Healthy Parks, Healthy People was uh, 2014 in Shenandoah National Park. Um, so I know it's been around uh, quite a bit, but I'm going to steal your phrase, stealth health. I, I, there's a number of places I can <laughs> adapt that. Go for it, yeah. Any other questions, comments, things you want to share about what nature's been like through 2020 till now, even though it's been a whirlwind? Your personal experiences? I'll give a plug for sure in Yoku, the forest bathing. Um. <laughs> and if you don't know what it is, if you just Google forest bathing, it does not involve swimming. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really about being mindful of all of your senses while you're out in the wilderness or nature of any kind. Yeah, I, I was really glad that the um, sounds came through on that video. You could hear the birds, you know, tremendously being aware of me and I was aware of them. And, and as a counselor, I think it's important. I think a lot of people think that, you know, when emotionally you might be struggling or feel isolated, I think we often think it has to be this big expensive solution or I need to go to a doctor. And, and there is that case, obviously. Um, but I also think, you know, getting out into nature and often it's free. I mean, some parks obviously have fees and whatnot, but I think it's important to know that like just getting outside, getting some vitamin D, going for a walk, going into nature, embracing it, getting lost in the sounds, even the, the video that Belinda put together. I mean, all the videos that she put together, you know, through this experience, I think some of the partners in the park said that she needs to start a, um, what'd you say, a TikTok channel on it or something and do these videos because they're so relaxing and you just kind of go in the moment and it's 10 minutes but it's 10 minutes to rejuvenate, to go on to that next, whether you're teaching a class, whether you have to go home and make dinner for five little kids, whatever that is. And so I think it's one thing that I've learned a lot about 2020 till now is that self-care is really important. It's not just a fancy term. It's like, we have to take care of ourselves and, and the parks are a wonderful way. So does she have a channel, Belinda? I don't know. I'll let Belinda take that. <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, but um, Diana put a prod in me in, in terms of if it's helping people, if it can help somebody, then I, you know, I, I would be, I'd be not cool for not doing it. So I'm ready when you are. And I've got plenty of them already. And then, you know, Angela was always like, go, just go make another video. <laughs> So I, it really was uh, the best assignment I'd, I'd ever had to travel around. Me and the kids went all the way up to the Canadian border this um, summer, and we stopped at national parks all along the way. So I, it, it was definitely a, a, a mental health um, and wellness check for me constantly um, because I drove over 5,000 miles. It was a good assignment. It was for health. <laughs> it was yeah, right. It was for science. I mean, you know, you can't be you can't be mad at that. And I I met a wonderful couple um uh, through River Raisin. They have been to over four hundred. They have a um. There's an article uh, about them 
in the USA Today, and it's also on the resource list. They uh, put together a book, uh, the Maitlands, and it's 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 basically saying these parks are your places and you need to get out and use them. They use them um, throughout educating their um, children, homeschooled them, and they educated through them through national parks. All right. Well, thanks for putting together that resource. I'm, I'm going to be delving into it more when we get off but i wanted if anyone else who's on if you haven't grabbed that pdf and saved it to your computer be sure you do it's a collection of all of us so um belinda steph and i have been working on this for quite a long time and then we were able to make connections with our partner staff um and so we really enjoyed working with them so um if there's no last questions comments and if you come to the big show, you're going to get a takeaway. We've got um, things that I've collected along the trip um, that you will be physically able to take away in hand if you come down to Orlando. All right. <laughs> I want to echo what Christina said, that having that resource, I downloaded it to my computer and just opened it and we'll explore it a little bit more. But that's a great resource. So thank you all for giving us a physical kind of digital physical takeaway <laughs> that we can uh, we can have from this so thank you absolutely all right well, with that, thank you all for being here um yeah and spending this time with us and go out and visit a park um, be yes. well and take care of yourselves yes yes group <laughs> hug <laughs> good to see you all Thank you.